beautiful summer's evening. I brought the gold belly for a quick spin up the road, just since it hasn't been used in a while. And uh, I want to just, I brought some tools to adjust the governor. So the idea being, the bumper screw there, so you loosen the lock nut, the 716 lock nut, and then you adjust this in. I just want to have a little play around with that. And we're on a nice quiet road here, and this might look like a steep hill, but just a little bit further on, it gets really, really steep. So I'm going to drive it up there. I'm going to make an adjustment first at the bottom and drive it up and see how it pulls. I want to see the governor juicing it up when soon, soon after it's starting to labour. And uh, we'll get to the top, we'll see if we need to make another adjustment, and we'll go and do it again and see is it any better. Uh, I don't have a big full trailer to, to be uh, testing this out with, but I think that hill should definitely uh, get the engine to govern. So it's on TVO there, and let's wait for this car to come past, and we'll go down there and come back up and see how we get on. Cut turf further out the road there. So there'll be no problem driving down this hill, that's for sure. real steep bit here. It doesn't even look like it is when you're driving down it, but we'll definitely feel it when we're coming up. Just reaching up the main jet just a touch to make sure it's definitely getting enough juice. But what I remember a man said years ago about these gold belly TVOs is they prefer to be driving and working. They don't really like ticking over. They're not as sweet ticking over as they are when they're working. But this one didn't miss a beat so far anyway when it's driving. So I'm going to do a quick turn around here and uh, I'm going to make a quick adjustment and uh, we'll uh, spin it. Put it into low gear there just in case. I don't know how deep these ditches are. I'm not going to take any chance. So I'm going to make a little adjustment and then we're going to. Again, it just does not look as steep as it is in, the, in real life on the video. So we'll make a quick adjustment and. I'm actually going to loosen this. So I am. I'm going to loosen it one turn. I think it's 7 16 Yeah. So we're looking about 12 o'clock there, so that's a half a turn, that's a full turn. So I'll just stop recording now because I need two hands to tighten that up and uh, we'll give it a try. Okay, that's done. So it feels really loose. So we'll see now how it pulls. Get it up the top gear first. So we're sitting there at a thousand revs. Let's see if it's able to... Well, it's going up now to 1200. Let's see if it can hold it around 1200 here. Back to, this is where I want to see it working. Especially at this hill here, this is where it gets fairly steep. The dying. Okay, so we're definitely, we're definitely not exactly what you would call govern. It does catch up with itself. Fair enough. 
that's only when the pressure comes off it and then it goes revving too high and that's kind of not where you want it to rev so there's half a turn there so I'll just tighten that up and come back okay so we're at the bottom of the hill again crunch so we've gone half a turn back tightening with a bit of rev see if it can govern a bit better we're at 1200 revs well maybe more so it's kicking in a bit there Dodge the bumps a bit. I'm just going to go now and give that another little twist. Just as well, I have good brakes. And what I'll do is I'll go one turn because it's what do we do? We went, yeah, we came back a half turn, so I'm going to go a full turn. That'll actually go half more than what it was. So. I'll come back and we'll see if that makes any difference. Okay, so this is an extra half turn more. Now I had this fairly set, set fairly well. In other words, where the, the workshop manual kind of said it was best. So we'll just see if it doesn't make a difference. Okay, straight away it's after picking up a lot when I let up the clutch there. In high gear, in top gear I should say. Now we'll see here, without touching the throttle, what does it do? Definitely feels like she's got a bit more grunt to her. And here's the test of this real steep bit here. A little bit of a steep bit here. Yeah, it does seem a bit more gutsy. My Jesus, that is some view. Right over to the burn of County Clare. Hill on Oran. Yarn Islands that beautiful blue the Atlantic Ocean but yeah so that is probably now it's to set a little bit more than we'll say what they would in the workshop manual sometimes I see some people say to turn it in one full turn so I've just gone the half extra so what I'll do is I'll monitor it and uh, Let's see. Let's stop it there now before the thing rolls away enemy. So I'll monitor it and uh, we'll see. Governors are uh, great when they work and they're paying the arse when they don't because they're the whole time messing with the throttle. The sun surely does bring out the, gr the gold paint, it's lovely. So yeah, we'll. Uh, Bring it back to the house slowly now and uh, see how does it behave. There's a little bit of an annoying rattle. So this I'm just taking out this split pin. I took out the washer there, and this pin, that's the split pin at the end there, goes through there, and it comes out there, and it, it rubs up underneath this bracket here, and it was a little bit loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out. I'm going to put a bit of heat shrink or rubber pipe over it. And I'm going to put it back on. It's the only rattle that I have in the whole bonnet because of these lads here are kind of keeping everything nice and snug. So, look, I may as well try and take it over. So, I'll just take it out and see here if we can make it a little bit better. So, this is the pin here, and there's a little split in the end of it there. If I can get it to focus on it, and uh, so I want to take it nice and easy on this. I want to go breaking it because it's, uh, it's been in there a long time. So I'll just Take up a bit of the, take off a bit of the paint that's on it, and we'll have a look through our uh, heat shrink and see if there's something. It's not going to take much, but by Jesus, it can bloody rattle. I can tell you when it wants. 
and uh, when I'm here the whole time trying to tune an engine and all of that it sure is nice when you can hear so I have a piece here I'm going to try I want this to be loose enough fitting because I don't I'm not going to have much room to uh, No much room underneath there to actually get it. Now if it's too wide, it's just going to go making things hard to close. So we'll just try it and see. That's all we can do. Um, anyone that was watching the 35X videos, see that I managed to get rid of a few annoying rattles in that as well. Those three cylinder engines have a lot, a lot of torque, and they bloody damn things can rattle it. They things can fairly rattle now when they want. So, just lining it up. So, that's it back in place. There's the washer, the pliers, you don't want to the bonnet on those. Put it back down in place. Let's see, does that make a difference? Because before, when I yeah, that's a sort. I did that hurt when I came home and the thing was rattling like fuck so that is a fairly uh, quick fix now so I suppose all I have to do now is just make sure I put back on the, the washer here on the end of it and uh, give it a little bit of a a widening and uh, we should be good to go again so I'll get a narrow screwdriver and I'll show you then what I'm at and if that works good I might do the same on here so all it all it involves is um I've got a new camera here but by Jesus I'm still learning how to work it all it involves is squeezing him flat taking off the washer so these are kind of sprung so I was making sure it wasn't them rattling and they don't seem to be rattling so all I have to do is just stick him in there if he'll go in give him a twisting again I'll probably need two hands but that's just the idea of it, the gist of it there so I managed to push him through a bit more there we'll get a bit more bite on him like that and I'll, uh, I'll give him a little bit of a widen and I'll show you them when I have it done. Purchase was the word I was looking for. When you poke that through you get a bit more purchase on it. Technical term. So that's the rubber underneath there. You can just see it underneath. It's nice and neat. And it just takes the metal on metal rattle out of it. So that side we can do it as well. So he's next for shaving, that lad there. And I do want to be careful with these because they're, they're very specific. I've never seen anything like them before. So I just gave it a bit of a squeeze there. I'm trying to be as minimalistic here as possible. Do the least amount of things that might damage it. And I might just need a grip with the pliers here just to get this shimmy out a little bit. She's turning in the end. Could, it could easily be a bit seized in the end. It is, we might get a little bit of uh, penetrating oil on it. Yeah, that's all that's going to want. A little bit of a dart of the penetrating oil and uh, hopefully a little bit of persuasion. See, the rush to coming out with that already. I'm not going to damage it, it doesn't want to come out. We will leave it be, I'll go about it in a different way, but I'm not going to be defeated that easy all the same. And with a little bit of persuasion, out it comes. Thank God over how uh, rust-free this tractor is in the furnace. Lovely. It's throwing an important component away. There it is. So we'll give it that the same treatment. We'll just give it a bit of a clean up in the vise and uh, 
We'll come back then and put on the same little rubber lad we have. I think I have a few more of them. They're just a little bit stiffer, I would say, than your standard heat shrink. But uh, they seem to do a nice little job all the same. So that's what we have to work with there. Bloody thing will not focus. So, quick rub of sandpaper. There's plenty of paint on this, so it's not too important to get it off, just to smoothen it a bit. And we have another one of them little and a hard plastic rubber lads here. They're some form of an electrical connector, I think. Now, let's see if we can try and get this to focus. Try tapping on where I want it to focus. Um, we just pull out the metal lad in them. A little bit of giving them, just the right amount. And it slips in there. Fierce easy. So, that's kind of what we want. We want easy. I'm trying to see now, it'll be better to... It's not going to work. That angle will fall off. So... So that's going to go in through there, uh, this way actually. In through there, our little rubber lad will go on over them there. That's what happens when you're working with one hand. If God gave us three now, it'll be a lot easier. So. This falls again, I'm just going to go and do it and come back. Yeah, I'll do that and come back because I don't think there's anywhere here I can actually put down the, the camera that it'll actually stay. So yeah, I'll come back there when that's in. So we'll just give it a gentle little persuasion into place. And then there was a washer on the end of that. And that just slips over there. We can let down the bonnet now and give it a little bit of a widening then with the screwdriver. So I'll do that and come back. Let's give this a little bit of a widening. Narrow screwdriver first to get it started. And with a wider one then. So look, that looks good. It's not going to go coming off anyway. Um, so that's the two of them done. I didn't show the rattles on that side before I did this. Looks that real metallic. And then when I go and bolt down my bonnet, I suppose things will be a little quieter as well with these little lads under here. That'll pull things, pull things down a bit. I found these when I was doing up the 35X, these little buckles and uh, oh geez, the other side is up. I never really, I often wondered how a 35 bonnet was held clothes. I've never seen these on a tractor until I saw them in the parts list. I was looking for parts for the 35X and uh, I didn't really know where they went but when it says bonnet catch thing I knew well it had to go on somewhere. And then I saw them two slots I put two and two together and uh, they definitely do the job they're meant to do. This is a nice quiet engine like when you're on it. And you're sitting up in it. The exhaust behind you. So it's nice to get rid of all of them rattles. So 
so that should be a bit even quieter there now anyway. Apart from that, fuel's off, we took it for a good spin. Did a bit of work on our governor, so we've gone half a turn extra. And when I say half a turn extra, what I mean by extra is when I was doing the governor, governor adjustment and I had all the linkages on off the throttle the other side, I, I tightened that bumper. Spray, um, what would you call it? it? It goes in again, the bumper spring. And uh, I tightened him in unt until uh, I felt resistance. That takes up all the free play in the governor there. So I'm after going a half turn. I see some people go a turn, some people go a turn and a half, some people go two turns. So we're at half turn. And I'll be able to, I felt, I felt that it kind of throttled up a bit more. So I'll be able to do give another half turn. That'll be one turn extra and try it and report back. But uh, the governor is a fine art on this and on that. She's pneumatically governed. So when you get them working right, they're nice. And when you don't, they're pain. So I'm going to leave it there for this evening's video. Um, the Sulagum Provincia Sultas. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and... Uh, Sometimes I think every engine is different and when it comes to adjusting governors you just have to get out and find a hill or pull a load or a trailer or whatever and see what works best. But uh, that hill definitely was good enough a test. So um, we'll leave it there and I might go next time and uh, do the same hill again and do another few turns on it. But until then, as long as Catch you in the next video.